Welcome to Christmas Eve worship at First Baptist Church of Madison, Wisconsin, a welcoming community of faith for all people. Tonight, we bring you a special service of lessons and carols with roots in the 19th century, featuring our traditional Christmas scripture readings interspersed with familiar Christmas carols and hymns. Tonight, we will also observe the ordinance of communion. So now is your chance to get your bread and your cup ready for when we do that later on in the service. I want to say a special word of thanks to all of our musicians, to our singers and readers, Advent candle lighters, and those leading us in prayer. The service has been pre-recorded so that you may watch it at your leisure. And we hope that after you have watched it, that you share it with friends and family on social media. I am so glad that you have chosen to join us for this special Christmas Eve Lessons and Carols service. Again, welcome. Join us now for our Christmas Eve affirmation. Advent hope moves us, Advent love leads us, Advent joy stirs us, and Advent peace stills us, that we might affirm Jesus the Christ. It is time we set flame to the Advent affirmation by lighting the Christ candle.
We believe that Jesus is the word made flesh, born of Mary in Bethlehem, Judea. The same Jesus that lives in our hearts today. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled, our love is consummated, our joy is complete, and our joy is sealed. Rejoice, a savior is born. A savior is born indeed. Join the world. Join the world. Isaiah chapter 52, verses seven through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This reading is from Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are, is, are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, old families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. Heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. 
joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all the songs employ, while fields and flawed rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace, and may the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love these are words from paul's letter to titus chapter 2 11 through 14 helping his young friend to understand more fully that what happened this night had far-reaching implications for him and for all human beings. These are his words. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all and training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions. And in this present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for, for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. May these words from the Apostle Paul enrich our understanding of what took place on this eve of Christmas years ago. have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. You were speaking truth to power, you were laying down our souls. Replanting every vineyard till a brand new wine is poured. Your peace will make us one. Burning with the quiet light Your mothering and fading In the wee hours of the night Your gentle love is patient You will never fade, oh time Your peace will make us one Hello. 
This is the season of Advent, the time we get ready to celebrate the mystery of Christmas, the time we have all been on the way to Bethlehem. Who has shown us the way? The prophets, good shows, who listened to God show us the way. Isaiah was a prophet who said one day the Messiah would be born. He would be like a light shining in the darkness. Isaiah said, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has shined light. So let's move the prophet over to Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph were right here with their donkey. They show us the way. They have shared their secret, which the angel told them, Do not be afraid. Be joyful. You will have God's special son. You will name him Jesus. Let's move everybody up here to Bethlehem. This is the one Michael was having. Oh, they're going to marry each other. Scoot them over so we all have room. The shepherds, which are right here with the sheep, show us the way to Bethlehem. They have good news, too. An angel came to them and said, Do not be afraid. Be joyful. Today a Savior, God's special son, is born in Bethlehem. You will find him laying in a manger. Let's move him. I'm going to move him. And your sheep. Right there. Good job. The shepherds and their sheep have come to Bethlehem to see the special child who was born. The Magi, which are right over there by the camel, the Magi are on the way to Bethlehem. They show us the way. The Magi saw a special star in the sky, a star for a king. They followed the star to Bethlehem, bringing gifts for the newborn king. Gifts of gold, frankincense, and earth. Great job moving them. Let's put the camel on the back. He's just tall enough. Yeah. Excellent job. Today, Christmas has come. The day when we celebrate the mystery of God becoming a person. Today, we are all at Bethlehem to meet the Christ child, the special son of God. Where is he? Here is the newborn Christ child lying in a manger bed. Christ the light, a light for the whole world. Me, me, I want. Here it is. Help. This is the Christ candle. It reminds us that Christ is light. The light shines in the darkness, and darkness has not overcome it. Let us enjoy the light of Christ. Blue mommy. Oh, well, that one's bigger than that one, so that one's the biggest one. Now, I'm going to change the light. What do you do, Mommy? The light of Christ can be with us always in many ways and many places all through the year. So we can keep Christmas all year round. <laughs> when I first found out that I had this assignment, I went into a, a cupboard in the back of our condominium and pulled out this Bible, which was my junior high school Bible that I used and probably uh, may well have read this passage 80 years ago from this, the notes. So I want to read from chapter 2 of St. Luke. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, 
because he was of the house and lineage of David. And this was to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now at the same time, there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth. You who sang creation's story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship. Worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplation, brighter visions beam afar. With the great desire of nations, you have seen the natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. As we prepare for this time of communion, I invite you to prepare your bread and your cup so that you may partake of this meal. The meal is prepared, the table is set. This table is not mine or yours. It does not belong to First Baptist Church. This table is God's table. And at God's table, all are welcome no matter who you are, where you're from, or whom you love, all are welcome to partake of this meal. God of all times and places, we gather at your table of grace to recall your vision of hope for all people and for your world. Through Abraham and Sarah, you revealed your promise in the surprise of a child. Through your prophets, you called your people to make a way for peace and justice. In Jesus, you revealed your way of forgiveness and love. Through the ever-circling year, your word discloses to us, again and anew, your promise for the restoration of all creation. As we gather to share the sign of hope and fulfillment, we remember Jesus, the child born into obscurity amidst fear and uncertainty. 
We remember the fragility of that revelation, as well as the hope he stirred and imagination he inspired. We remember Jesus, the one who blazed a new and risky path of extravagant generosity and of passionate concern. Temple shaker, world maker, rule breaker, risk taker, the author and finisher of our faith. We remember Jesus' self-giving love and the offer of himself for others, even those who gave him over to death. On that night, in the midst of great confusion and fear, Jesus broke bread with his friends, saying, This is my body, which I give for you all. When you do this, remember me. Now take and eat. With a blessing, he took the cup and offered it to them, saying, This cup is God's covenant, which is given for all people. When you drink this, remember me. Now take and drink. Come to us, life-giving Spirit of God. Bless us, bless these gifts, and bless what we do here so that we might sing your song of love for your people and for the world. Let us pray. God of shepherds and kings, you gather us by the light of the star of promise. You lead us not only to hope for the future, but to trust in your presence and renewal of life in every time and place. Guide us this night by the light of that same star. Lead us to the mangers of this world where uncertainty is met with the renewal of life and the transformation of this world is most deeply felt in love, one with another. Be with us on this most wondrous of nights, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
Advent, in Latin, a coming. During this time of waiting, of anticipation, we have shared the prayers and lit the candles in preparation for Jesus' coming. As we live through this pandemic, we look ahead to a time of coming together of our families and friends who have been separated from one another for so long. We feel a deep longing to see, to touch, to wrap our arms around each other, to be together, close. On this Christmas Eve, we join together our hearts and souls, rising and mingling across the miles through the cold of winter with those we love, wherever they are. We long for God's healing touch and are reminded that we can never be separated from God's love and grace. Tonight we celebrate Jesus' birth and his coming to us, for us. And we remember that Jesus, comforter of all, the giver of grace, joy, hope, and love, lives with us, walks with us, accompanies us on our daily journeys, tonight, tomorrow, and always. May God bless us all this Christmas. As you go, hear now this benediction. Tonight, as we celebrate God with us in the birth of Jesus, let us continue to live lives of hope, peace, joy, and love. Share God's love with the shepherds you meet on the hillside. Let the communion of the Holy Spirit fill your heart with good tidings like the angels. And may the Prince of Peace, born again tonight, live in your heart to comfort and challenge you as you seek to live as one of his disciples. Now go in peace.